Well, hey, we got a couple of things here I, wanna, I want us to, you, you three to respond to. October 7th, uh, man, Hamas attacks Israel. It's been a whole year. Can you believe that? We finished the conference, uh, the Thursday night event. All of us went home, and, and then it was October 7th. That was the 6th. The next day, um, Israel is attacked. And I want you to watch this clip, and then I want, to give your, I want you to give us your insights um, looking back over this last year. Let's watch this. Well, this country is preparing to mark a somber anniversary. We love you all so much. We don't want to die. I hope my kids will be at least okay. It's October the 7th, exactly one year since that horrific Hamas attack that would go on to kill around 1,200 Israelis. 100 remain held hostage by Hamas in Gaza. This is the ruined streets in Nero's kibbutz. There were only six houses in the whole kibbutz that weren't actually impacted on October the 7th. And Vivian Silver, the 74-year-old prominent peace activist from Winnipeg who had dedicated most of her adult life to advocating for Palestinians and against Israeli occupation. And in a cruel irony, she was murdered by a, the group Hamas who claimed to be fighting for the very same thing. Unlike the other kibbutzim, the Israeli army did not arrive in Near Oz until after Hamas fighters and waves of looters had already left. But instead of peace, we are seeing just the opposite. The Israeli military really ramping up its offensives on multiple fronts. In Lebanon, first, we have seen in the overnight some of the most intense bombing to date, particularly in the southern suburbs of Beirut, a Hezbollah stronghold. Israel's new invasion of Lebanon means the conflict is now threatening to spiral into a regional confrontation with Iran. Jan, what are your thoughts? It's been a year. Well, <clears throat> Amir came out with kind of a review looking back a day or two ago, and he said, this, is the, this may sound a bit harsh, but I think he's really right on. He says, this is the only way for Israel to wake up from number one, mm -hmm. inner division, and number two, uh, neglect of the dangers around uh, Israel because the Israeli people have they've been living the good life it kind of they think they thought they could get along with their neighbors when the neighbors if I can be blunt were barbarians and you can't make peace with barbarians and that's really a message to the whole world and we know who the barbarians are. I'm not going to say anything further. Mm. Yeah. What were yeah. your thoughts? Guys? Well, so how many know that the media hasn't been totally honest about the war with, between <laughs> Israel and Hamas? How many, how many realize that? Okay. They haven't been honest? They have not been honest about it. It's unbelievable. I News know. to me. Uh, just think about this. And we need to share this with people because the truth is not being told. Israel is made to be the demon in this and the Palestinians are the victim. Think about this. Since the Israelis gave over the land in Gaza in 2005 to the Palestinians, the world, and especially the United States, has poured hundreds of billions of dollars into that. Hundreds of billions. Think of what they could have done with that. They could have built tourism. They could have built hotels. They could have built commerce, industry, you name it. They, and they're right on the Mediterranean, some of the most beautiful parts of the world. Yeah. And what did they choose to do with that? They chose to build hundreds of miles of terror tunnels yep. so that they could eventually do what they did October 7th, attack and kill Jews and then hide from them and then hide the hostages. I mean, think about that. They don't want peace. They never have wanted peace from day one, from the time Yasser Arafat tried uh, with, when Jimmy Carter and Anwar Sadat, remember that, the peace agreement? They had 97% of what they wanted and he yep, said no. That's right. So they don't want peace. They want to push them into the sea. They want to kill Jews. That's what they want to do. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you, the reality is, in this last year, whether it's Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, or Iran, over 12,000 projectiles have been fired into yeah. Israel. This is just, it's astronomical to think in the modern world that something like that would happen. And then Israel, the ones that's getting fired on, are the aggressors. Yeah, and you know, everyone still is, we just need a two-state solution, two-state solution. When Israel pulled out, Gaza was governing itself. Mm -hmm. That's right. And what did they govern themselves towards, evil or good? 
evil. And so the bottom line is you can't trust evil people. I, I know that's a novel idea to our liberal thinking minds, but uh, it's absolutely right. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, let's, <clears throat> let's be praying for Israel. Let's pray for the confusion of their enemies. Yeah. And again, these things shouldn't surprise us because we recognize in these last days, um, Israel's going to be more and more isolated. And sadly, here in the United States, we're seeing more, again, of our leaders just, you know, withdrawing. And so we need to pray. Mark, if I just say one more thing. Yes, I think the fact that in the last year, much of the world has cheered for Hamas has been a, a yeah. wake-up call for us. I mean, this is what the world thinks of Israel. Mm -hmm. They're basically cheering for Hamas. Whoever would have thought that? Now, if you know the Bible, that's not real surprising. But still, again, they're cheering for barbarians. They're not cheering for the people who represent freedom and democracy in the Middle East. Well, that's Jan, I think you said it best. It, on that day, it was like tens of demons. thousands of demons were unleashed yeah. on the world, and not just in Israel. It's, this is worldwide. This is yeah. a spiritual battle. These, this is a spiritual attack on those that can't see the truth. Well, and that's the reason why we just had our pastor's huddle, our fourth pastor's huddle, and the topic was what? A biblical yeah. and theological evaluation of replacement theology. There has been uh, this demise of conservative yeah. theology towards replacement theology. The church is now more important, and Israel has no hope, no future. And that is an right. absolute lie. The scriptures are clear. There is a future for Israel, not only for the land, but a salvific restoration. We must stand firm on that. And if you're Absolutely. Absolutely. If you are a part of a church that believes that, you're in the great minority. Mm -hmm. Huge minority. Yeah.